Let's do well, it. Welcome back to the Buffalo Happy Hour podcast. Mike, what's going on? We are over at our friends at Carbones, and we are sitting here with Sexy Slices, and I'm actually fairly excited for this. It's your first pizza place. This is going to be crazy. I'm a huge fan of pizza. Everybody who listens to our podcast knows that I'm a huge fan of pizza, and uh, we, we got the man, the myth, the legend here right now with us. I kind of like pizza. <laughs> I'm, I'm fairly indifferent about the pizza thing. You have a mask of pizza, which yeah. is the best thing in the entire world. It is. It's a gem. It's become quite a piece of the collection now. <laughs> I wear this and a lot of frilly things around the house, and this has become a favorite for the missus. And <laughs> Yeah, I love it. You guys should get one. Twenty-seven dollars on Etsy or something like that. So <laughs> we'll leave a link in the description below. Not a sponsor. Not, <laughs> not a, sponsor. a sponsor. Yeah, definitely not a sponsor. Uh, so in 2015, you established yourself. However, in December 2016, there was an article posted on Reddit discussing your job in the South Towns and how many suggestions flooded in on where to get good pizza. So from there, you decided to visit a different pizzeria every week for a year. Who was your first? You did do some research. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Going through, I'm like, oh, my God, where is he going to uncover the, the dusty past where I slaughtered people or something? Um, my first review out of the whole thing was Wise Guys in South Buffalo. And they're still doing their thing today. A lot of the places I went actually closed up shop, which all got poor reviews, actually. So there's credibility for old sexy slices. <laughs> but um, the first one was Wise Guys in South Buffalo, and they do an unbelievable job. In hindsight, I wish I could go back and – well, actually, no, I did. I forgot. I did that for the news. I went back and gave them a re-review because my first one, I think it was like – you know, your first out of the gate, it's like making a pancake. Your first one is shitty. Yep. So I did the review. I gave them like a B plus, and they really are like an A, A-plus pizza. So uh, credit to them. But the first one was Wise Guys. A lot's changed since then, but that was the first one out of the gate. And they're great. Yeah. What made you come up with your rating scale? Because we have a rating scale when we write whiskey, but yeah. yours is completely different. It's and it's still not great, honestly. Like I hate the rating scale a little bit at this point, <laughs> but like we're too far down the path to try to change it. I didn't even start off with this scale. I started off doing, um, I think one to a hundred, which is bananas because you're sitting there eating a pepperoni, being like, is this a seventy three or like a seventy eight <laughs> pepperoni? And at the end of the day, like, 85% of Buffalo pizzerias use the same pepperoni anyway. So I think I went from 100, and then I went to a scale of 10. And then I just kind of thought back to school and was like, ah, like, why not use the simple letter grading of, like, F is fail. Like, F means you didn't make a pizza in one way or another, which nobody's gotten an F yet, but I'm kind of waiting for that to happen. (laughs) But it just made sense of, like, I don't know, it's easily relatable. It's like, oh, a C minus. I remember what that felt like for most of my educational career. (laughs) So that seemed to make sense. But now... I've kind of been back and forth between like C minus C, C plus B minus, and it's tough. I haven't given it up yet because I feel like there really are some in betweens where you're like, ah, eh, like that was a C, but I also had another C from these guys, and like that had to be shittier than this. So like the in between grades is a little bit of a caveat on it that I feel like adds value, but like I'm probably just talking to myself there. <laughs> so that's how I came upon it. That's. Kind of what happens to us, too. Yeah. We're, we try to nail down specific numbers, and it's almost impossible because well, there's just too many variables on it. 100%. And then you'll go back and look at your reviews and be like, oh, man, I gave that thing a B plus, and then this whiskey's a B. Like, this definitely kicked that ass. Right. And then, like, do you go back and make edits? Like, that's a whole other thing. I think you shoot yourself in the foot trying to do that, too, like going back and retroactively changing things. Sure. Thank you, Ryan. Oh, my God. This Montreal sticks. Tacos. Fingers, boneless wings. That's what I'm going to die. Man. <laughs> Shout out to our friends at Carbones for hooking us up with some food here. Oh, my God. This Should is a just, lot of food. Uh, this is great. Get at it. I'll, just yeah, put yeah. it. I'll put it in the center so it's visible. Yeah. And appreciate and it. We'll, uh, we'll go from there. It's like a cornucopia of all things <laughs> Buffalo. So what do you actually – we talked about your rating scale and, and how you do the, the A, B, C. Sure. But what do you do from – like how do you rate it? What aspects of the pizza are you rating? Dough, cheese, sauce, pepperoni, and then overall at the end. Appreciate it. So you've got your four critical aspects, and then from there, you just, um, this mask is fucking tough sometimes. Um, You've got four key aspects. I'll go ahead and eat that off my head. Um, And then those just are a flat average, which is another thing I'm not positive I love either, because it's dough, cheese, sauce, pepperoni, A to F grade, and then you just do the rounded average of all four to get the final grade. But... People have pointed out to, you know, they're, they're right as well, where it's like, man, is a really, really good piece of pepperoni going to, like, should, that, should an A-plus in that category be rounding you out to a better grade overall? Probably not, right. but I'm not changing it. So <laughs> that's, at the moment, I've stuck to flat grading. The good news is if I ever wanted to go back and change that, it would just be a simple calculation where you weight that, like, 
25% and Doe gets rated like 75% or whatever the math is. I'm not a mathematician. but So you have an Excel spreadsheet of everything though, right? Oh, yeah. Everything that you've calculated. So you could technically go back and change the percentages of all it this. It would be stuff. nothing. Yeah, it would be a quick formula. We'd, you know, and it would be it would be easy. But I'm just not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> At the, I'm working on a website right now, and that's that's taking every single iota of brain power that I have. So eventually, maybe we'll go back and do it. But right now, it's a flat average, and I think it works enough. You know, you get a good guidance on what a shady pizza is and what a good one is, whether or not their pepperoni was particularly good or not. Mm. So yeah. we're working on it. So speaking of math, there's <laughs> okay. there's something that I found where you've been to 104 pizzerias, Uh-oh. you've consumed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. Hold on, keep going. <laughs> you've consumed 418 slices, and you've also visited a hospital. Mm-hmm. So what happened there? But I know we can't necessarily legally get into too many specifics on that, but <laughs> w- what can you discuss? The hospital visit wasn't particularly for me. The hospital... <laughs> Are you blaming someone? <laughs> no. Well, maybe. The hospital visit happened when I was at a pizzeria, which shall remain nameless, um, in North Buffalo. And we were getting pizza, and this woman was a walk-up, and I order a pizza, we get it, it comes out, and there's a lady dining in the pizzeria at the time, and she's choking on a buffalo wing, like, hacking her lungs out. So we got dudes over there, you know, giving the old Heimlich and all that. She coughs this up, and at this point, we're, we're literally, we're way up in the North Town, so like, we're super close to the hospital. She ends up coming with me in the car, I drop her off. I've got a whole pizza in the car on my way there, and um, dropped her off. Got her taken care of because she she was a walk-in and um, very old one. So went to the pizzeria, uh, got a pizza, left with an old lady, and ended up at the hospital. Wow! So it wasn't for me personally. Yeah, I, I have not, not currently that. been killed by a pizza. <laughs> not yet. They haven't even tried. But <laughs> that's a super good day. story, though. Yeah, it was cool. I brought a pizza into the hospital, and I ate most of it just kind of hanging out in the waiting room with her. <laughs> she made it, by the way. Did she, she's great. <laughs> did she have a slice? She did not have a slice, no. <laughs> she was not in the mood for food or much talking. Yeah, what kind of question is that? After that whole experience. Oh if I was in the hospital and someone had a full pie, I would hope that I would have a slice. That's all I'm saying. It wasn't even worth it. It wasn't good pizza. <laughs> oh, goodness. So it what really was wasn't. the lowest grade, uh, not to throw out the pizzeria, we won't talk about that. Oh, no, we can talk about the lowest grade. Oh. I mean, that's, that's publicly available information. The lowest, the lowest grade ever was um, Nickel City Pizzeria, which happily no longer exists. So I don't even mind. <laughs> Sorry if you operated that pizzeria. Happily. Yeah. <laughs> they got a D, I think. Flat D. And the other part of that, people are always like, oh, man, you never get out of an F. Like, you got to get out of it. Got to, like, give an F out. Like, some pizzerias just suck. My rating scale is like an F literally means I can't finish the pizza or the slice. And I haven't yet been able to do that because, like, in some semblance of the word, pizza is still good, even at its shittiest point. There's that old famous quote where, like, what, sex, bad sex is like bad pizza, even when it's bad, still pretty good. <laughs> yeah. and, and that holds true fairly well for the most part. Like, the pizza was horrible at Nickel City, but I, I still ended up eating all of it. So I didn't give it an F. If that ever happens, they'll get an F. But it was gross. And it was the weirdest thing the cheese was like what really sank it. <laughs> and like, I used to work in the, um, well, don't get too deep into that, but um, I don't know what the hell they were using, but it tasted straight up like plastic. And it would like break <laughs> apart when you pulled it. And it was like, it was this close to an edible. So that's what really sank them. But then like they undercooked half and burnt the middle. And it was horrible. They used to be on South Elmwood, um, right in the Allentown area. And then they became Fryberry Donuts. And I think that's still operating, but. Nickel City by far. They sank the ship. They were the worst. So hopefully nobody, you know, breaches that low. But that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bab. So there's Sicilian pizza. There's Buffalo pizza, New York City style, Chicago style. Oh, yeah. Rank the worst to the best. Sicilian. Yeah. Mm. That's a tough one. I want to rank Sicilian the lowest. And people confuse Buffalo pizza with Sicilian pizza a whole lot. Because like, oh, I'm very similar. Like the grandma pie thing, which I don't know if I would say the grandma pie is even a little bit of a bastardization of the Sicilian pizza where it's a little bit less thick and a little more, it's a little flatter and a little cheesier. It's like a fat guy's pizza, which I'm super into. But <laughs> the, the Sicilian pizza I think is low for me just because like really bready, super doughy pizza, 
not a thing for me. I really don't like that. There are a lot of people that live on that, like, just thick dough. I'm not into it. So they're going definitely lowest. Next one up the rank is going to be New York-style pizza. Like, I don't, I don't love New York-style pizza. And there's people that are fanatics about that. Mm-hmm. Again, still love it. I'm happily eating New York-style pizza. <laughs> right. But, like, it's just it's not there for me. I don't love it. So that's going just above that. And then above that, what do we got left on the board? Chicago and Buffalo? Yes. Honestly, I'm going to throw another one in there. I will say I will go Chicago, and I'm going to put Buffalo and Detroit style at the top, man. Ooh. Detroit pizza and Buffalo pizza, like as, as outrageous as this might seem for someone whose entire hobby is rating Buffalo pizza, <laughs> Detroit's got us on a run for the money, y'all. Like, they have unbelievable pizza. Yeah. If you get a chance to go to Jets, which anybody from Detroit will tell you is shitty Detroit pizza, but yeah. Jets will, like, change your life. I've got friends on Jets that lead to like, be on methadone. Like, they're <laughs> weaning off the Jets. Like, it just becomes this easy thing to order. It's unbelievable. It's got that crispy edge. It's everything about Buffalo pizza that's good, but a little bit more of it. Like, it's got a little more cheese. It's got a little more salt on the edge, a little more sauce. So Detroit is unbelievable, man. And obviously, Buffalo pizza is just like... That's been a hard thing is trying to get people to understand that we really do have a different style of pizza in the right. city. I'm trying to push that. I think we're making some grounds, but it's just a tough effort. So I'm going to tie Buffalo and Detroit at the top. Chicago right below it just because everybody's like, oh, God, Chicago pizza's a casserole. Mm-hmm. Like, so what? You don't like pizza casserole? That sounds delicious. Yeah, like, I would eat a pizza yeah. casserole, absolutely. So Chicago <laughs> is right below that, but I'm definitely putting Buffalo and Detroit at the very top. So when you eat those, you obviously have to enjoy pizza do you still enjoy pizza even though you basically do this every week or how in kind of off that how frequent do you do these pizza reviews well the pizza reviews i do weekly once a year for like a year straight and then i take a big pause which is what i'm doing right now i did pizza tour 1.0 huge pause pizza tour 2.0 and now i'm on the pause between that and what will inevitably become pizza tour 3.0 Somewhere in the future. I haven't figured that out yet. But when I'm doing the reviews, I do it weekly. I don't know why I like keeping regimented about it. I feel like it keeps me on it and like there's this goal to achieve. Even though it's not as cool as somebody like running a marathon or anything. It's like the exact (laughs) opposite of that actually. (laughs) But I like the fun of that and like searching out new places. And like it gives me something to like keep in my mind for that week. And I don't know. It keeps me motivated to keep doing more. But I do once a week for a year. And then in between then obviously in these break periods like to your point of whether or not do I still enjoy pizza. I'm in no way shape or form like swearing off pizza at any point i love pizza man even when you're doing the reviews like weekly and weekly pizza will just happen to you like that's just a buffalo thing you will go somewhere and somebody will bring it in for your company party or you'll go over to a friend's house and they'll get pizza i don't not eat that pizza i guess that's what i'm saying like and if you hated something like that you wouldn't even be tempted by it i'm if pizza's around i'm 100 percent of the time grabbing a slice so you think you get sick of it after 104 spots but you really don't man like towards the end of a full year like on number 48 it's a grind sometimes and you got to eat that pizza but even then like the, the pie disappears it will go somewhere like i will end up eating it cold so no honestly i still am passionate about it i still love it and i'm still ready for more man i, I recommend everybody give it a shot do like a 10-week stint you'll see just how long it takes to get freaking sick of pizza oh yeah it's so, amazing so how many are left if you've been to 104 oh dude there's an estimate that there's 600 pizzas or pizzerias in Buffalo. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> Who put that out? The, like the Better Business Bureau? Shout out to Arthur Bovino. He's got an Instagram called NYC Best Pizza. Check it out. He came to Buffalo. He did a huge like Buffalo pizza tour. He wrote a book on it too. Um, but yeah, Arthur did some research, like dug into the depths of like the archives looking into like actual business classifications on what's recorded in Buffalo. And we have over, he didn't get an exact number. He may have, but in the book it's over 600. And that puts us at more pizzerias per person than New York City. Yes. Which is probably the world, I mean, well, yeah, probably the world at that point. Because even in Italy, they don't eat pizza like we eat pizza. So right. we probably have more pizza per capita than anywhere in the country, save somewhere in rural Idaho that happens to have two in a town of three people. But... <laughs> And We're like, cups. yeah, right? That, they'll <laughs> pump that stat. But no, man, like we have a ton of pizzerias. And mm-hmm. I've done officially 104. And there's been more in between there that I just haven't put together for reviews. Like sometimes you just go eat a slice and it's not part of the tour. So I either save it or I just fucking forget about it. But I've probably eaten at 150 pizzerias around Western New York in the aggregate at this point. 
So I've, I'm just scratching the surface. I'm not even a third of the way through these things. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some close, more open. So there's always more to hit. But I don't think I'll ever achieve the goal of getting all of them done. I would love to. That would right. be so <laughs> cool. But I'm, I'm, I'm proud of having a third done at this point. I'd like to get at least over the half mark. So if I could knock out like 300, that would be super cool. Yeah. That's awesome. So you don't get paid for any of this, and, and you don't like to accept any gratuities either. No. So what made you want to put so much effort into doing something like this that to you won't net anything? You know what I'm getting at? I do, and it's like shattering me a little bit because <laughs> I'm, I'm, like, I'm like diving into the depths of why I do this. I mean, you have you have future stuff coming up, but like sure. from – when you first went from this is going to be something fun that I'm going to do to now I have 10,000 followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Like, that's a big jump. Yeah, definitely. And, no, I didn't have any aspirations of, like, making money. Give me one second while I choke down this pizza. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's super good. Yeah, these fingers are good, too. Everyone's yeah. That's amazing. No, um, I didn't have yeah. any, like, I didn't have any huge goals of ever making anything out of this at all. Like, I was very heavily involved in the Reddit community, still am, and it all started off on R Buffalo, the subreddit um, for the city. And it was genuinely just what you said. was like, I got a job in South Buffalo. I grew up in Lockport. And everybody talked about how many amazing pizzerias came out of South Buffalo, and I realized I, I just never went to any of them. And I like pizza. Who doesn't? Like, it wasn't ever even my favorite food coming into this. I wasn't, like, a fanatic about it. I just wanted to try more. So the joy of just seeing the discord among people like talk about this so passionately and finding out like this weird subculture of underground Buffalo pizzerias. Like I know we're at Carbones right now, but like the Carbones know the guys at Bocce's, the Bocce guys know the Picasso guys, like, excuse me, holy God. <laughs> but it's really, um, it's really like one big Buffalo pizza family and everybody's been super friendly and the community is honestly what keeps it going. Like, sure. okay. Even the trolls, too. I love you guys, man. You guys are great. Like, getting the, getting the DMs of people calling me out for being awful or having no knowledge on pizza, like, I love you, too, man. Like, it's, it's really, it's the fun of having the conversation about it that keeps me going. I'm adamantly against accepting money for this. I think the whole Instagram influencer culture is bullshit. So, I, I'm not about that. I did hold a pizza event. I did make some money off of that. But, like, that was fun. That was, that was cool. It was about giving people a good time. It was about promoting business. So, I was down for that. All right, we got hot barbecue. Dark Parm, Country Sweet, Lemon Pepper, that's a new one, Jamaican Jerk, Cajun, and Honey Mustard. Oh my gosh. That's you are the best. Because you got some blue cheese. Shall we swap trays? <laughs> yeah, yeah sure. I think so. Well, at the moment, oh, we can put yeah, it aside. Okay. I, can, I can pack it up. I'm going to a pool party later. I might as well grab what we can, I suppose. And you guys take whatever you want, obviously. So, as the trays flip, uh, so there's two things. Both of these questions fall in line with what we just talked about. Uh, the first one's pretty quick. So which pizzeria has the best dine-in experience that That's, you've been to? It's a great question, honestly. It's not something that is discussed. No, people don't really play that up a whole lot. Um, dine-in experience for pizza, I'm definitely going to have to give it to A, being Casa de Pizza. And then after Casa de Pizza, I'm going to give it to the original Santoras out uh, in the pew. They both have, Santoris has like the old school setup, the old lamps that kind of look like the old Pizza Hut stylings that have like the different shades and colors on them. And Casa de Pizza is really cool because they have a bar. Like there's not a lot of places that you can get alcohol and pizza at the same time in Buffalo. And that's a match made in heaven, man. So I would say best dining goes to Casa de Pizza, quickly followed by Santoris. And Picasso has a bunch of dining. You can eat there too, but I don't know. That's more of a takeout operation. Santoris original really is a good sit down spot for that. So where does Pasquale's fall into that? Pasquale's is interesting for me because I don't, I'm, I'm putting like a niche weird gray line in the sand on whether or not you're a pizzeria or if you're an Italian restaurant that also does really good pizza. Makes sense, yeah. So that's why I don't think I put Pasquale's in it because if you're starting to loop in Italian restaurants, that's where you start. It's a whole different category of stuff too. And I love Italian restaurant pizzerias, man. They have the best sauce every single time. Yeah. It's such an amazing thing. But that's why I'm counting Pasquale's out. Italian restaurant, not technically pizzeria as far as I'm concerned. So, fun fact on sauces. In my research, I found out that the Italian sauce that's used in pizzas was actually originated from Mexico. And the, the folks that were affected by conquistadors actually had the original recipe for what is now today's Italian sauce. And Italian sauce started 200 years after the Mexicans had it. So, like the Aztecs and, and all of them. 
I know the tomato came over and like was uh, was a thing for Mexico before it was a thing for anything in Europe. Mm-hmm. But I didn't think about the way that the sauce would progress with that. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah, I don't so. know if anything yet. <laughs> I'm trying to think. It's like, well, you know, there's a great Mexican place running pizza. <laughs> Nobody's done that yet, yeah. but. Go get it, somebody. But they always have amazing sauce. That is amazing. Well, yeah, definitely. That's mm-hmm. like always the caveat of great Italian places. Um, Campo Bellos out in like the Williamsville area. That's an Italian restaurant with really bomb pizza and an unbelievable sauce as well. So, shout out to those guys too. But it always helps when you're when you're making a shit ton of sauce every day. Your pizza will just naturally step up because of that. Right. Sure. So, at what point did you realize that this is something big? Like, do you remember this specific pizzeria that kind of put you? got you the most followers or anything like that? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. <laughs> Fine, It's Mike. on the list. you got to wait, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the list. So in we've already talked about the competition and what put him <laughs> over the edge, but there's <laughs> there was a specific competition that you were a part of. Essentially, you ran it. Yeah. Right? So it was $25 for, say, Derek and I to show up and have as much pizza as we wanted to then deem who we thought was the winner of the best pizza. Yeah. So Macy's Place ended up winning that. They're over in Chictawaga. And what were the events leading up to that event? And what was it like to plan and coordinate something like that? That was an experience. I've, I've never done anything like that, by the way, in my entire life. <laughs> yeah, feel free to chat on these wings while I ramble on here for a little bit. But um, I, I'd never run an event like that in my life. And I was thinking, it started off thinking about the Buffalo wing competition that we do and just how gigantic that is. Like, what a huge draw. And the fact that, like, Buffalo was wing famous, but like we're pizza famous too. Like yeah, sure. everybody talks about the beef on weck being like the biggest thing. Thanks, Ryan. Pizzas are about to be coming right now. Beautiful. We got steak, sausage, bacon, cheeseburger, ham, and meatball. Hell yeah! Thank you, sir. <laughs> he really is gonna kill us, man. <laughs> I'm literally gonna waddle away. I'm in. He waddled away. <laughs> I, I just in. can't. <laughs> but so we got the we got pizza. You've got the beef on weck, but like pizza is really bigger than beef on weck like we're right we're really a wings than pizza place and there wasn't really too much out there celebrating pizza there was the festival of, uh, festival of the slice they had that going on in advance that's, uh-huh. it's like the Texas that's perfect right, right. The we'll start swapping green, everything so in whatever you want to do boxes and stuff take home sure we're here we got our famous new pickle pizza uh, we got steak chicken finger and then here's cheese pepperoni oh my gosh thank, thank you, you so thank much you. we and have to get to the pizza we'll get to that soon Breadsticks. Got it. Jesus. Breadsticks. Breadsticks. If, if you guys can see kind of like what we have right here, we'll take a picture after, but yeah. holy cow. It's a lot there's, of food. There's too much food to even understand what's going on right now. So, holy shit, those are good. <laughs> yeah, there, everything around us, it's not in front of us anymore. It's around us. That's how much food we have. Yeah. Is sensational. So... Don't mind us, um, but if you're hungry, come to Carbones. Yeah, shout out Carbones. Yeah, I'm We're stepping it up on the wings. At their South Park location. Mm. So, yeah, continue oh, with sorry, the Sorry, yeah, I rambled on about that. No, you're fine. But, no, at the end of the day, I just didn't, I, there, people will always talk to me on my Instagram and say, like, oh, your opinion is shit, or hey, I really agree with you. <laughs> and I decided that it would be best to let the people who are the loudest be the ones that can actually decide. So I would select and curate like 10 of my favorites, put them in one location, you all eat them, and then you can be the judge on what you guys actually think is best. And it was eye-opening because not only had I never run an event like that, which was like a huge part of my life for months, like I was at Hydraulic Hearth meeting with them weekly to make sure everything was on schedule, ordering t-shirts, getting the glam vamps, shout out to the glam vamps to come do some really sexy, very unusual (laughs) pizza burlesque. I think we got really noted for that. A lot of pizza slapping going around. But I also wanted that to be part of it, too. Like, I'm, I live kind of what I would consider to be a fringe lifestyle in certain ways. I, you know, I like the wilder parts of life. So being able to have an event where it was, like, fun for me to, like, get a burlesque show involved and have this crazy pepperoni eating competition and have there be booze involved and pizza, it seemed like a fun, like, 30-year-old pizza enthusiast dream. And it was a lot – it was as much for me as it was for anybody else. But – Putting it together was massive coordination. Huge shout out to the pizzerias who are all very, you know, helpful with their time and super easy to coordinate with. And then we put it together and it was a mammoth success. We sold out like instantaneously. And at the end of the day, Macy's Place Pizzeria won, which is very gratifying for me, not because Macy's Place Pizzeria is my favorite out of those. They're amazing, but um, 
It was good because the people came up with a decision that I don't think you would have slated yourself if you had to guess in advance sure. who was going to take that title. So that's what it's all about. That's been my biggest trying like message of outreach is like, don't just believe people when they say that X pizzeria is the best pizza in Buffalo or, oh, you got to go here. They do it the best. That's probably not true, man. Like, you probably like a p different pizzeria than the person next to you. You might just not know it yet. So go out, try a bunch of pizzerias. There's gold to be found. You just got to go dig that shit up. Where, where was the event held? Hydraulic Hearth. Okay. Outdoors in the beer garden. And it was a beautiful day. I was freaking out about rain. It never came. We got, like, the most unbelievable weather. Got a little hot, but <laughs> that worked out. I ended up eating, like, a slice and a half of pizza the entire time because I'm just, like, running around and trying to do all this shit. So people are like telling me in the competition, they're like, oh my God, man, like Picasso's, they brought their A game. And I'm like, I'm sure they did. Like, <laughs> I did not get to try the Picasso's at all, but I'm sure it was like amazing, obviously. And they came in second, so they killed it too. But oh, nice. it was it was a blast, man. I didn't even get to see the burlesque show, by the way. That was oh, a huge man, bummer. It's the worst. Glam Bamps owe me a private show at some point for event in the future. Well, we got him back here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. That, that would be so amazing. <laughs> But that, it's just like, it was super fun, and I hope everybody else loved it, but there were little parts where it was kind of interesting watching from like the background on these things you planned, mm -hmm. but you're not there to truly enjoy it for yourself. So it was fun. It was bittersweet to not be involved in it, but I was super pumped to do another one this year, and obviously with the whole virus thing, it was not possible. So uh, in the meantime, that's on pause, but definitely hoping to do it again because people seem to love it, and I had a hell of a lot of fun. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. So that did that event lead to this other event that you did at Macy's Place where the uh, the food consuming expert himself decided to destroy a double stack? Oh, my God. <laughs> Megabyte Ronnie. Macy's winning was huge. A, because they – I don't want to call him an underdog. I hate when people say that just because it's not like they didn't have good pizza beforehand. Right. They just didn't have the notoriety that everybody else did. So when they came and won that, we had a ton of press at the event, and there was a bunch of news articles released, and I did some live interviews. When they won, Nick, who runs that place, took that energy and just exploded with it. Like, he took the success from that event and the kind of the, the pizza eye being on him for that. Because unfortunately, winning is always what people care about the most. Like Everybody else did an amazing job, but when you win like, and you have the big trophy, that's what everybody rallies behind. So when he won that thing... He just ran with it. His Instagram was fire. He started throwing out all these crazy pizza ideas. Now he's collaborating with everyone. He's got the most creative pizza game. So he just exploded out of that, and I'm super happy for him. I, I look forward to watching them expand. But definitely huge shout-out to him. It was very fun, very humble guy, family pizzeria, which most of them are, Carbone's being the same. Like, uh, just amazing to see somebody with a good business and a really nice guy get some get a little bit of notoriety and just run with it so sure. shout out to him amazing job so what was that uh that competition with ronnie like uh, how, and how did that start oh man the ronnie thing was wild ronnie um i think ronnie reached out to me at the start of it and he'd done a couple eating challenges in the past and i'd seen them on youtube i have like also a sort of like sub interest in watching people uh competitively eat on youtube a lot of odd hobbies at the end of the day well i didn't know that um i didn't know that he was a buffalo guy which was great so um ronnie uh he reached out and i said yeah man if you think you can do it like come tackle this double stack because i'd had it and that pizza is serious man yeah. like yeah. i got through i think a slice and a half and i wasn't like done i was like uncomfortably done <laughs> i couldn't handle it been there oh my god <laughs> yeah. dude it's so intense did you try to tackle one or yeah. you just oh my yeah. god man i didn't understand what it was until the delivery guy showed up in my house i can walk there but it's a double stack so i wasn't gonna waste energy oh my god so the delivery guy shows up and i thought that it was just like a chicken finger pizza yeah and He's like, all right, just sign here. And I paid with a card, so I didn't know how much it was. It was like $30 something, right? Yeah. Close to 40 Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, well, hold on. Like, why is this? What is this? And then I went to, like, take the box from him after signing. And he's like, no, dude, like, two hands. I'm like, I'm sorry, what? And he goes, take two hands to carry the box. I'm like, all right. And then I hold the box on my own. And then I just look at him. He goes, I'm not lying. Oh, and I was my like, God, dude. dude, this is like, how heavy is this? He's like, it's about a pound a slice. And I'm like, yeah, all right. So I, he leaves. My fiance walks in the room, and she goes, what would you order? I'm like, apparently something that I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah, so a $40 I, bill. Yeah, so I open the box, and then I just stare at this thing, and it's like an inch and a half thick. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> so I take a bite, and then I'm like, all right, half slice. That's You didn't try to go for the whole thing? I, I finished a slice because I'm an animal. But yeah, I was talking was about the just, whole pie, man. No, not, no, <laughs> I couldn't. I couldn't. It was – I. 
Yeah, two I slices. Did, I did four slices in a sitting. I did two it in a sitting. Monster, yeah, good for you. Yeah. I did. Yeah, I did two in a sitting. But now I'm having heart palpitations. So yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's that's a fun but very obscure way to die, man. You'll end up on a list with that one. It's an incredibly heavy pizza hook. So how fast did Ronnie finish it? Ronnie finished it in under 30 minutes. So for everybody that doesn't know, Macy's, so we're talking about this double stack, but what it is is it's a, a layer of pizza crust, and then on top of that first layer is blue cheese and like three or four yeah, chicken right. fingers, right? Yeah. And then another piece of crust, and then your regular cheese and pepperoni. So this thing is a pound of slice, and Ronnie ate it in 26 minutes, you said? Yeah, under 30. It, it was insane. He just powered through it, and he was, and honestly, he probably could have done it quicker, the first like three slices were ripping hot still, and we let that thing oh, cool for as long as possible. And time just got away from us, and like we had to do it. And he powered through and like scorched himself a little bit on the first couple, but it was just amazing to watch. Like that's such a feat <laughs> of humanity. That's why I'm so interested in like the whole category because it's like <laughs> with a gun to your head, I don't think you, like you couldn't do it. No. So no. why can some people? Right. Like it's just like I know there's training. Like you stretch your stomach with like pickles and shit to like get it huge but not fill up calorically then you let it shrink then you need a bunch of like celery like it's literally expanding oh, and stretching your diaphragm to like train for these kind of events and it's just like it's a weird form of like body modification that like i just find super fascinating so yeah ronnie's crazy like just to watch him do that was nuts <laughs> and he's super swole too the guy is cut and he's just like crushing this giant pizza and his girlfriend's watching the whole time and i think she had a little glimmer in her eyes well i think she was into it too <laughs> so I, I was, it was very, I had my fiance there as well, and it was just like, I felt, I didn't feel like a man watching him do that. Right. It was unbelievable. I, I don't know if I'm embarrassed to say, but I did watch the full video of it. Oh, good when for you, When it was man. live, I watched the full thing. I was so intrigued, too. I really appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know if I would hold on for a half hour. I tried to fill in with witty banter when I can, but my God. It was impressive. Yeah, he was, he was incredible. So he powered through that, and it was, it was super fun to be a part of. I'm glad I didn't have to try it myself because I would have literally gotten three slices in and been done. <laughs> yeah. So he's a monster. But yeah, no Macy's kidding. Place is doing some wild stuff with their pizza for sure. So ar around that time frame, did you also start writing articles for the Buffalo News as well? Because you, you were solely Instagram and now you're doing some articles as well, right? Yeah, the news reached out um, and they said that they wanted to develop sort of this review segment specifically for pizza. They liked, um, they liked the voice that I had on Instagram. They were sort of, we'd talked before about making it happen and whatnot and we were kind of going back and forth on how we could do it because my style of writing and my voice is not exactly what the buffalo news has been used to in the mm -hmm. past but they were super interested in it but i didn't want to compromise too much on what i um what i had in content and i'm not super vulgar but i like to throw out an odd reference every now Absolutely. and again for a joke so toning that down and going back and forth with that um has been something i've compromised on but they've been very very lenient in the editing and all that and yeah, we met, we ate, um, we ate an Imperial pizza. We all talked it over and they agreed that they wanted to run the segment. So now I'm doing reviews for the Buffalo News, but I'm just going back to places that I've been and giving them another shot on places that deserve it. Like Wise Guys, for instance, went back, hit that, did another review there, and they way outscored where I scored them in the first time. I was definitely in the wrong on the first shot for that, but it's been fun revisiting some of the old ones from 1.0, giving them another go around and writing it for the news. So. That's been huge. They've been amazing. It's been a fun partnership. And uh, we were kind of back and forth on whether or not what we do with the, the furlough at the news and obviously COVID happening and all that. But um, we're, we're starting to back up. So look forward to more articles coming out soon. It's been fun. I've loved it. That's awesome. So what yeah. platforms are you on? Do you have a, <clears throat> like a YouTube channel or is it just Instagram and Facebook, Twitter? Like I don't have a YouTube yet. I'm a, YouTube is like my main source of entertainment. So I've always had like this fantasy where I do something on YouTube, but that involves like this. Like right. this is like this is like a lot. So I don't know if I'm that committed. Yeah. That's why I asked us earlier how much all this costs because he wanted to start it. Yeah, I'm like no, wow, that no, not gonna happen for me, not yeah. in the near future. But no, I, I I give you guys a ton of credit. It's something I've always wanted to do, being on film and like doing this and being part of a community that creates content is super fun. I think it's an amazing part of humanity. So eventually it'd be fun, but no YouTube right now. I've got Instagram, I've got Twitter, and I do have a Facebook page that I'm working on, but like Facebook sucks, man. Yeah. Like you don't want to be on the Facebook page. <laughs> Facebook page is where every dude who's 45 years and older, who's got a profile picture of him in sunglasses and a slick back <laughs> head, yelling at me for why I don't like, I don't know, Geno's in New York pizza or something. <laughs> so it's, just, it's the angriest community of all time is Facebook. Those are the guys 
apart from some salty DMs I get on Instagram, those are the ones that are always like just it's just an older community, and for some reason they're like really true to the roots. I'm like, what makes pizza pizza for me? Like, right. so I kind of hate the Facebook thing, but I've got it for posterity's sake, and I I still put stuff out there. But Instagram and Twitter, that's definitely where it's at for me. Good deal. So with. Uh, everybody knows the Barstool Pizza Review guys, and I don't know if they're your yeah. nemesis or if, if you like them or not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they came to do a couple, Thank or Dave himself came to do a couple pizza spots. Portland like came. Um, yeah. Does that? Do you feel like that would help you, or that helped you, or do you think that it's just a different type of pizza review that you just don't follow? I. I've seen a lot of Dave stuff. I don't. I actually don't follow him on his social media. I don't go through with it. But it's not for any reason that I don't like Dave or anything That's like that. That's a flex, man. You yeah, do I don't follow him. Um, but it's not for any it's not for any particular concerns about that. For me, it's just mostly like I do Buffalo pizza. I like Buffalo pizza, but like watching Dave go city to city to all these places that like I'm probably never gonna go. Right. Why do I give a shit about how great the pizza is in Des Moines? Like I like I. I <laughs> What am I going to go to and do that? You have something with Iowa, don't you? Oh I do have an Iowa thing right yeah, now. What is up with that? It seems like the worst place in the world to live, man. <laughs> Sorry right. for all the Iowans. <laughs> all right, so we just got a pepperoni pizza in front of us. You want to try to do this? I'm interested to see what your first thought process is when you open up a pizza. All right. So, first of all, do you get a slice or do you get a pizza when you go? Depends. On the first tour 1.0, I just did slices. And then people really got angry that I was just doing slices, so I said, screw it. I'll just do whole pies for the next one. Like, it's a $15 difference, but I love you guys. <laughs> so I started getting whole pies, and you definitely get a better shot from a pizzeria if you get a whole pie as opposed to getting a slice. Okay. But there's also the underlying principle that if you're going to offer slices, keep your slice game tight, man. Sure, like, right. make sure your slices are good. If you've got shitty slices in the thing at 3 p.m. and somebody comes in, those slices shouldn't be in there. So I don't know. But I start doing whole pies now because it's a better thing. And we do the unboxing. I usually open it up. I hit it with an immediate photo of the top-down angle. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking for overall are how the cheese looks primarily on the top. And then the next thing that I do is the old peel up on the bottom here Ooh. so you can see how it looks. That is a nice, well-browned undercarriage on that thing. <laughs> so I also count pepperoni as well. I love every second of this. Just you enjoying so you know. this? Oh, yes. I recommend everybody give it a shot, man. It's, it's amazing how scientific this has gotten. <laughs> so you look for it. You give it a once overview, you see the cheese, how much there is, whether or not it's melted, evenly distributed, if there's browning, yada, yada, yada. And then you count pepperoni slices. Now this is, I think, a small pie, so it's not, it shouldn't be the same, but I've always repped Carbones for their unbelievable pizza game, and they're showing it here on the pepperoni. Um, eight to 10 slices is what you're looking for as an average. Anybody who's going above 10, kudos to you. You're putting more pepperoni on the pie, which I don't think there's many pepperoni eaters out there that think, oh my God, there's too much pepperoni on this pizza. Right. Like, nobody <laughs> says that shit. So eight to 10 is the average. If you're below that, you're below average. If you're above, you're above, yada, yada. So you count your pepperonis. So this one, I'll go for this slice. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, again, on a small pie, above average. Solid cheese count on this one. We already took a look at the undercarriage, so feel free, fellas, crack yourself off a slice. Yes. So we'll go through the process on this. Real quick, what is the, what's the white table? The table? Yeah. The well, table is so when you compress the box, if you're delivering it somewhere, if it's going somewhere, it won't smash below a certain point. That's where your pizza table comes from. That's the official <laughs> response of what that's for. What, do you guys have an argument about this? No, there's just some random thing going around on social media that you use it to prevent slices from touching each other when you go to pull it away. And that's you fucking can, dumb. Yeah. <laughs> whoever, that's said, dumb. whoever said that doesn't know what they're talking about. That's uh. dumb. So one thing that Dave does, and I don't want to take away from your thing, is the flop. Do you care about flop at all or no? I don't care no. about flop. Buffalo pizza has flop. You're going to get flop. Yeah. And there's plenty of good pizzas that have flop. And there's plenty of bad pizzas that have flop. It's all about your dough consistency in the middle when you bite through. So that's another quick thing I look at. So you take a look at this. If you can, a little gross, but this is what I do. <laughs> um, you try to find a saucy spot. You get a finger dip in. And you taste just the sauce. Just the sauce. And I freaking love carbon. This is a whole nother level of eating a pizza. I have never done 97% of this. <laughs> it's not as fun, I don't think. It's like no, going it's through not. and just, like, my second slice is always just like, all right, now we'll just feel how I generally feel about it. The first one's super analytical. The second slice is just like, all right, now we're going to eat this like a regular human being and just have some freaking pizza. So I try to taste the sauce a little bit. Carbone's is super herbaceous. It's a little acrid, which I like sweet sauce people out there i don't i just don't get it but there's plenty of people that like sweet sauce what is acrid acrid is like really acidic it's got that like ah tangy <laughs> bite come on man you gotta get your pizza ad yeah. adjectives going here that's a classic pizza adjective <laughs> so 
<laughs> it's a little acrid, this. super herby, and it's bright. So I like all that about the carbone sauce. And then you obviously give it a bite. Speaking for my slice, a lot of sauce in there, obviously, mm -hmm. which a dry slice is such a crime for me. I'm a big <laughs> sauce guy. And that's also where like preference plays with it, right? Like I don't know if you guys like sauce. Like what, what's your oh, favorite yeah. thing that you're looking for when you're when you're eating a pizza? More pizza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we got three slices. This is an A plus for you. <laughs> <laughs> and like four more pies probably coming at this point. Right. Yeah, we have enough food. But uh, I like I think sauce is probably my favorite yeah. aspect of the personally. Yeah. My second would be cheese, though, because mm. the sauce obviously makes the pizza pizza, yeah. right? But then the right elements of cheese is what kind of sends it over. That's why Pasquale's typically does well, because they add the little sprinkles on top. Yeah. I hear you on that, for sure. Yeah, that, that's the same with me. I, I do like the, the spicy or the, the acidicness to the sauce. Yeah. The sweet sauce, there's a time and a place for it, but it's not my favorite. Mm. Like a bonanza sauce. <laughs> Is very the bonanza. Very, remember that? Oh yeah. Are they still open? Mm -mm. Okay. They had so much sauce on their pizza, it almost overpowered the dough. Oh yeah, that can happen. I mean, there's there's limits to everything, right? Yeah. Right. Even like I, I love cheese. It's my second favorite for sure, probably. Dough is a close third. Mm -hmm. But it's probably the, dough is the hardest thing because that's really what makes a good pizza and a bad pizza at the end of the day. But I don't know. There's just people out there that are like, oh my god, my crust is a favorite part of the pizza. Stop lying to people. That's a bold face lie. You're not going and attack. Like, why wouldn't you just get breadsticks then, you psychopath? <laughs> it's just not true. So that's all bullshit. But um, I like cheese a lot, too. And there's a place out in North Tonawanda, kind of in the same vein as, like, the Pizza Junctions of the world, um, who used to be out that way. It's called Good Guys. And they just annihilate their pizza with ingredients. Like, cheese, sauce, pepperoni. It's just murdered. Like, it's the heaviest, densest, like, not super dense, but, like, it's just a super, it's like buffalo pizza turned up to, like, level 11. Everything's just there in mass quantity. And I like good guys, but it's real. I've had some slices where I'm just like, holy shit, this is too much cheese. And you wouldn't think that would be a thing, but, like, it's a thing. Yeah. And then there's the Armor in Tap Room, which bought the old, um, the old pizza junction. Well, no, it's the Bazanas recipe. They bought that, actually. And they're making it at the Armor in Tap Room. And the cheese is just like, it's just too much. It's, it's too much for me. I'm calling on on that. So there's limits to everything. But I like a lot of cheese. I like a lot of sauce. So then after that, at this point, you start rapidly tapping into your phone with your greasy finger what you think everything scores on your initial <laughs> result. So for Carbones, I am super crazy for their sauce. I'm obviously giving the sauce, for me, an A. Probably, I, I, I always struggle with A+, plus too, because I'm like, I want to give an A+, plus, but I'm like, perfect. Is this perfection? Like, that's, yeah. that's why we do A-plus check marks, and then we just go off the wall, because no one knows what any of that means. Right. Like, what are you going to, like, one day I'm going to have a sauce that's going to, like, send me to the stratosphere, like, I reach right. Nirvana and, like, evaporate at my desk. Like, <laughs> like if that happens, that's probably an A+. Plus. So, like, <laughs> I'm going to give them the high, high A on the sauce. The pepperoni is amazing. It's, it's pretty standard buffalo cup and char on this cut, but... We've got some that are charred and some that aren't, mm -hmm. and that might freak some people out. I love that. It's a texture variance, so I'm about the crisp, crispy ones. Sure. I'm about the chewy ones. How is it even possible? I don't know. I don't know. That's, all the, that's also the mystery for this for me is I've never made, like, a pizza in a pizzeria in my life. Oh, really? Oh, no. I didn't come up with, like, experience in pizzerias at all. So, <laughs> like, I don't know how to make it. I don't know how the sausage is made. I don't want to because it keeps, like, all this, like, a very, like, master craft to me. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure it's probably a little simpler than most people think, but like, my God, like that's that's magic to me that they can do that. So, so, so you're not interested in making a pizza mm -mm. because you feel like it would take something away from it? Hell no. Yeah, okay. I'm not gonna order. I mean, there's there's a billion amazing pizzerias around. I don't want to do the work, man. Yeah, why would I make one? No, not, somebody will, somebody around the corner. Yeah, you you can't walk five feet in Buffalo and not hit a pizzeria. Mm -hmm. So like, true. It's cool. I respect the craft. I have made a cast iron pizza every now and again, but like, the idea of like, oh, will you one day start your own pizzeria? Like. No, I don't want to do that, man. <laughs> so speaking of that, what would be your favorite frozen pizza then? Mm. Because that's something that sometimes you can't always get out and get a pizza. Sometimes you're desperate. Yep. And you got to go frozen yeah, every would, Friday. Would you really consider a Wegmans frozen pizza desperate, though? Yeah. You I'm going to call it desperate. Oh, I'm going to call it desperate because, again, hearkening back to just the unbelievable quantity of pizzerias that we have 
I guess I could see yourself in a situation where it's Friday, you're trying to save a, a little bit of cash, you don't want to wait an hour to get a pie, especially if you're going to get it delivered, and you don't want to go out and you're feeling like lazy and it's got to be in a pinch. That does happen, but I think it happens rarely. So I'm going to call it a desperation move still for the Wegmans pie. And I think my favorite, if you have to go frozen, which, no disrespect, I go frozen. It happens. Mm -hmm. If I'm going frozen pizza, I'm probably going to go with the Screaming Sicilian pizza that just came out. You can see them at Wegmans. They're everywhere. It's got the big mouth in the box. They do a pretty solid job on a frozen pizza. I also have uh, no shame against DiGiorno either. They do a fantastic job of frozen pizza as well. It's not out of the question. I rarely get it just because it's such a big part of my life getting pizzeria pizza. But if I'm doing it, the Giorno or Screaming Sicilian. So where do you sit on chains? And I'm talking like Domino or Domino's and like Pizza Hut's. Those chains. I love chains. Yeah. Love the chain. <laughs> chains get a lot of hate, ma'am. But whatever. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> so I'm I'm more familiar with. Uh, Domino's than Pizza Hut. Yeah. Obviously, I've had both, but I've had more of Domino's. So, the thing that bothered me the most is the size. I just thought it was too small. Oh yeah. You know, uh, but it's not a more. Buffalo Large. Yeah. And in the chain game as well, like, I don't like chain pizza as far as like really enjoying it. Like, I'll eat a Domino's slice without no problem. But I am all for them trying to come into Buffalo and set up shop because we usually crush them. Like. Right. True. This whole idea of like, oh my God, chain, like get it out of here. Like, oh, it wouldn't be here if they didn't think they could make money, man. Like, chains come, they set up shop, and if they get business, they get business. It's your responsibility if you don't like chains, either A, don't eat there, or B, eat there and realize that it might be kind of shitty. But I'm all for the friendly competition. Like, get the chains in if they want to come. <clears throat> Plus, chains also do employ people. Like, at right. the end of the day, that's money going into a pocket. It's just like it's, it's funneling up directly through a corporate chain that probably makes somebody extremely rich on top. But like, right. At the end of the day, there's still people with jobs, man. Like, the Domino's on um, Delaware has been there for years. I don't think they're there because they're losing money, man. So, like, right. I'm all for healthy competition. If you're going to go chain, though, man, Jets Pizza. Back to the Detroit game, 100%. If you have not had Jets Pizza. Oh, they're a chain? Oh, my God. Yeah, they're a big chain from Detroit. And they have one location. I don't know about the rest of New York, but certainly in western New York, one location on Delaware. Oh, I didn't know that. Jets will change your life. All right. What are we chance. doing in like 10 minutes? Are we going? Not eating more fucking pizza, man. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do that. <laughs> so, yeah, me neither then. Yeah, really. Yeah. So, when you're reviewing, just to get back to this, just as the final point, how often or how far into the pizza do you finally give it your rating? Two slices. Two slices. Okay. Everybody gets two slices, man. You go one slice for the analytical stuff. I make key takeaways. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to start the sauce off in an A. Pepperoni's got this kind of count, this flavor, this sort of cooking. And cut. Sometimes it's hand cut. Sometimes it's not. Um, So that always counts into it. You give everything an initial rating. You get a general feel for it. And then you just eat a slice regular. None of that crazy bullshit of, like, tasting your finger. (laughs) And then that's where, like, you confirm your suspicions. And that's things change there, too. You're like, oh, like, I was probably too harsh on the sauce that first time through. Or, like, my first slice might have just been, like, pizza slide around a lot. Like, you might have not had a lot of sauce on that slice. This one's got a ton. So you weigh – it kind of is a smoothing average of two slices. And then you, you make have, the call. Do you have a listing of all, everywhere that you've gone that is available to everybody or just for you? I have the Google spreadsheet that is a shared link right now that everybody can go to. I am hotly working on, up until the moment I left to come here, the Sexy Slices website. Oh, nice. It is live right now. I don't know if I should tell people, but go for it. Take a look <laughs> at it. It's live. I am working on it. I've got, I've got the original eight archive posts that I did in order up right now. I'm working to eventually all have 104 up there. But I will have, it's 99% done. I've just got to work on making the posts. That will be the area that you can go to, like, see where I've been, see where the rankings are. You can go to the map. It'll be geotagged with all the places I've been with their scores and their contact information. So that's where you can go eventually. For now, go to the Google spreadsheet. I've got everybody ranked there, and I've got all their locations um, ranked in there as well. So you can click by where you want to check places out. Do you see, like, Picasso's has a lot of locations. Do you favor one location over the other? Is that played into your score too? Or do you rate based off of the company, not necessarily the location? I rate on the company, not the location. Gotcha. And I think Picasso's, is a, I've had Picasso's from several different places. They are so down to a science that like, yeah. and not only is it good at different locations, it's good every time. Like they just, they do not screw pizza up, which is unbelievable. They're so consistent. Yeah. But 
I, I don't ever rate places one by like if you go on my spreadsheet, if there's three locations of something, I just have my one score. I didn't say where I went, and that's just for their whole thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure there's some variation on one or two sites of that, but at the end of the day, I just I make that as a stamp of the whole company score. Plus if I start going to multiple locations on pizzerias to try like their micro spots, I'm gonna die. Right. <laughs> like I can't do that. So <laughs> overall it's just like you get one. If you got multiple pizzas, so be it. Right now, Jets is probably the current champion with like 300 U.S. locations, <laughs> right. all rated A. <laughs> but yeah, I just one spot. That's it. When you rate pizza, you normally stick to just cheese and pepperoni. There's a hundred percent. I completely. There. Well, there's, oh, there's one. Okay. There's one review I just did. I was gonna um, say I was just on your page. Domino's I did recently. <laughs> uh, and then hey, well, there's also ones where if I. I do this thing where I don't eat meat for a certain part of the year, and I do eat meat for a certain part of the year. But even during the non-meat eating part, I still eat pepperoni slices, but my fiancé won't. Okay. So I will get a pie that is half mushroom and then half cheese and pepperoni. Oh, okay. And I will rate the cheese and pep, and she will rate the mushroom. Like, does that play with an overall pizza's, like, consistency and bake time? Like, I don't know, maybe, man. But I always, always, always get cheese and pepperoni, except for the review of Domino's Pizza that I did, which for some reason I got uh, ham and banana pepper. I must have been drinking. I don't know. But <laughs> I rated them on just toppings, but who cares? It's Domino's. They got a shitty score. So is that your favorite? Is this your favorite type, or is this just what you rate? No, man. I, I, I'm cool with cheese and pepperoni. It's what I rate because it keeps a baseline on everything, yep. and I don't have the stats on it, but you've got to think that cheese and pepperoni has got to be the lion's share of the pie chart of what Absolutely. pizzerias are actually selling. So that's got to be your baseline. My actual favorite pizza is hot peppers and sausage. If you have jalapenos and sausage, like, or cherry peppers and sausage, that is where it's at. But I will usually accept banana pepper sausage, which is what most people have anyway. It's giving me heartburn just thinking about it. Oh my God, it's a nightmare. (laughs) That is my personal favorite. What about you guys? Go for it. If I'm, if I've never been somewhere, I'll have cheese and pep. And then if I've been there a bunch, then I'll experiment with a chicken finger. Smart man. Yeah, I like chicken finger a lot. That's always a good first step out of like, first step out of the comfort zone is going to a place and getting their chicken finger pizza, or any specialty pizza for that matter. I've never been disappointed with a chicken finger pizza. It's tough. Although I will say Macy's pizza, the the burrata one. I have not had it. He, I mean, he does so many different types, but that one was absolutely insane. I have not. I've seen photos. It just looks like. It's just a fucking lot. It looks amazing. Yeah. But. You're not going to find it at any other pizzeria, so that's why you wouldn't rate that. You like that but, one? Oh, it's very good. Very i got to give that a shot. Yeah. You actually want to bring over the pickle pizza there? I want to give that Absolutely. a shot. Too. Now we're thinking about that. the yeah, specialty let's, slices. Uh, let's move on. Let's move this. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I am a pickle fanatic, man. Are you really? Love pickles. Huge on the pickle game. <laughs> Some people think that pickles, or no, pineapple don't go on pizza. What are, you, what are your views on pineapples? I'm telling you, man, I am an, I'm an all-acceptance man. <laughs> At the end of the day, if you want to throw toe clippings on your pizza and you can sell it, <laughs> sell it. I got two <laughs> oh, darn. So I'm cool with it, man. I, you got to let people live their own lives. Right. I'm no totalitarian pizza dictator. <laughs> what kind of world do you want to live in where you can't throw things on a pizza if you want to? True. But do I, do I personally enjoy it? No, man. I don't think sweet and meat have... An area they should coincide, right. personally. So pickle pizza. Pickle pizza. This has got pickles, what looks like cheddar, mozzarella, and I couldn't guess at the sauce offhand. And a sesame crust, which, by the way, start putting seeds on your crust, everybody in Buffalo. I don't know why not every single pizza in Buffalo has a seeded crust option or a garlic crust option. Why would you not want to improve that experience? I have. I need another plate. This is, this is <laughs> an intense slice. Feel free to go. <clears throat> this is very good. The sweetness of the pickle. Oh, dude. This is fantastic. Yeah. That's a good-ass pickle, too. Right? That's a thick slice. Yeah. That's not your average It's not your average pickle. Mm-mm. I don't know where I was going with that one, but oh. it's not. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the amount of puns that we're coming up with. <laughs> Innuendos. Wow. This is a very good pizza. Mm-hmm. People are used to moments of silence when they drink whiskey, so this is fine. All right. Let me grab one more bite before I enjoy this discussion with you. Oh, Fine some gentlemen. kid in Korea is going to whack off in this video. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Like eating in the microphone. <laughs> Isn't that ASMR or whatever? Like it's like, like the... mukbang, I know, is like the thing oh, that they're mukbang, all doing. Yeah, yeah. But I don't know. That's so strange to me. It's a strange time, man. But like I said, I'm here for it. Yeah. You enjoy it, whoever so, you are. <laughs> whoever you are. <laughs> so... 
first of all, we just had pickle on pizza. Um, I'm sure there's going to be a long discussion in the comments outside of loved it mm -hmm. on our post on this. So what are your what are your thoughts? For me, it's you get the sweetness from the pickle and then an overbearing amount of cheese, and I'm not complaining about that. And then you get a hint of the seeds at the end, and uh, you just kind of want to keep eating it. And it's smooth, man. It just slides down the gullet. Yeah. I'm in the same camp on that. I, I was, I've only had like one or two other pickled pizzas in the past, and I was worried it was going to be really, really briny sure. and way too salty. And for some reason, it's not, even though there's like a seven, five, like seven handful bag of cheese on this thing. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know how they're pulling that off. But no, the pickle works really well on this. I like it a lot. But I, I struggle with specialty pizzas in the same way because it's like you like your pizzeria, you enjoy the cheese and pep, and then you venture out and you get your chicken finger pizza. It's even hard for me to take that third step to be like, all right, now let's go for like the taco pizza. Right. Like, I love the idea of specialty pizza. I enjoy, obviously, having a litany of them at my disposal to try to try them. But, like, the move of like, getting a specialty pizza, ugh, it's just the disappointment if you were to get one and it sucked would just, like, crush me. Crush you, yeah. It would crush me. And, like, you, you got to reliable, man. You know you love the cheese and pep. You know that you love the chicken finger pie. Like, why are you going to ruin all those years you built together? <laughs> like, maybe crush that relationship. <laughs> I just get nervous, man. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I like specialty pizza a lot, but outside of chicken finger, I do rarely order it. I would certainly get I would get pickle pizza. I do dig it's that. But is it usurping like my chicken finger? I, that I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, you got to look behind the navel for that one. Yeah, That's, we're we're huge fans of Parks and Rec, and one of the characters, his favorite food is not pizza; it's calzones. Where do you stand on calzones? I am in on calzones, big on calzones. I think that they are outdone by Stromboli. Oh. I think the Stromboli is the next level of the calzone that it can't quite get to. But they're both amazing. Mm -hmm. I do love a calzone. I have ordered a couple in the past few years. It's a sneaky, interesting order that I will sometimes pepper in. <laughs> but I don't know. I don't order a ton of them. But now that, you, now that I'm thinking about it, like I want a calzone. They're very good, but Stromboli, I think, don't say that too. I'll takes bring one out. Oh my god! I, I know, so right? Food. I can't handle it. <laughs> it's already being cooked. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I love a calzone, but I got Stromboli takes the cake for me on that one. What about you guys? You like uh, calzones? You like Strombolis? Yes, yeah. calzones are amazing, uh, but you you just can't beat a regular pizza. That's the that's the tough part yeah. too. It's like you got to be in a weird mood for a calzone. Extremely weird move or very drunk. Yeah, it's just it not, also helps. Yeah, like oh maybe it'll be more convenient and I won't schlep it all over myself. And you fry your chin on hot cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I feel about pizza walks too. Like I love myself a pizza walk, but at that time I'm just gonna get myself a regular pizza because I love pizza, and then I'll supplement that with mozzarella sticks or something like that. One hundred percent. Pizza logs are a thing you order seven beers deep at a Bills game. Yep. Like, that's where the pizza log has its, has its place. That's like $70 for five pizza it's logs. It's incredible. Why would you do that at a Bills the game? The margin on pizza log at <laughs> the Bills game? Because that's one of the sexiest, man. You're there, and you're standing in the line, you're swaying back and forth, and you're freezing your ass off. We're probably losing, and you're just like, oh, man. You know what would make this better? A financial investment into pizza <laughs> logs. Yes. Let me just quickly approve this loan. Yeah, you got you to gotta pull up your key bank app <laughs> before you buy those pizza yeah. logs. So speaking of that, Bill's season happening or no? No. No? No. I am super bummed. I have got tickets, obviously, to several games. I just I do not see that happening. I want it to so bad. I am a huge, huge Bills fan. Don't get me wrong. It would make me so happy to have that happen. But everything that has, like, every time I've gotten excited for an event, it has not happened. Yeah. So, like, I don't even, part of me also just doesn't want to even kind of get excited that it might happen. Sure. Because I'm going to build my hopes up. And they will be shattered. Coronavirus made going to the post office terrible. The post office? Yeah, like the one thing that you think would always be consistent. Why was the post office ever great? Because <laughs> what relationship you never, do you have with the post office? You never <laughs> mail stuff out to people, and you're like, wow, like they're gonna be so happy when they get this package. Like I just love giving gifts and wow. going to the post office. You know, it's just like one of those things. And now it's ruined. I'm here the for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the enthusiasm for the post office. Shout out to the postal workers. <laughs> Do you go to any away games at all, Bills games? Uh, when I can, I try to make it out to one. I've seen the Bills play in Cleveland. I've seen them play in Kansas City, and I've seen them play in Florida as well. 
Um, Florida's pizza is garbage. Oh my god, yeah, <laughs> it's terrible. It's, it's, it's not terrible. even a conversation. It's the worst, man. But I do like going out to watch the Bills play. The cool thing about going out elsewhere to watch the Bills too is, um, even if you don't go to the game, finding the Bills backers bar. What an experience, man. The Bills backers bars are more lit than the bars in Buffalo are on Bills games. Because those are like the true fans that are like there. They've got like their local mascots and heroes and like they're all serving blue light and doing chicken wings and like God knows they're trying. But like that's what's really cool, man, is going to see like the local fan scene in other spots when you go to the backers bars. I like that quite a bit. Have you ever thought about branching out and doing wings as well? Or are you just stuck on pizza? No, man. No, <laughs> no I mean, as, as a thought crossed my mind, 100%. Like, I would love to be, like, the wing guy and do wing reviews. But the whole point of this for me, I think, is, like, stick to one thing. Sure. As soon as you start to branch out, you lose a lot of the value that you provide to someone. Like, how many guys are out there right now doing, like, oh, like, this is how I feel about food in general. Like, yeah, man, you and everybody else. Like, I think in life it's best to find a path, hone in on that, become the expert in it. Because if you don't, you're just going to be an inch deep and a mile wide and... At that point, you're just, what are you really offering people? Right. If you don't become an expert in something, why does anybody want to go to you? So I, I've always tried to stick to pizza. Thankfully, it just ended up being really, really easy to do. <laughs> yeah. I think wings is tough, man, because wings, you've got to go to a place. They've got, they're more expensive generally, A. B, uh, they're going to be super balls hot when you get them in your car. And by the time you get them home, they're going to be completely cold and rubbery. <laughs> if you try to so eat them true. in your car. Oh, yeah, they're gross. So Take out wings are not good. <laughs> And then, like, if you try to eat some in your car, like, you're, you're going to get a complete mess. You're going to be screeching on this, like, steering wheel with your gross hands. Like, all of a sudden, it's on the inside of the windshield. Yeah. You're like, I don't know what happened. Yeah, taking a Delta Sonic now. There's, like, a quarter layer of pizza grease on my steering wheel right now. Like, I can't fathom if I had to deal with barbecue sauce. So, I'm not doing that. There are other people on Instagram that are giving it their best shot. Like, more power to them. But, no, I don't want to attack that. Um... There's some other good reviews out there right now. Somebody just started Buffalo Bodegas, which, honest to God, I came up with the idea. I, I, I'm sure it's very easy. It's alliteration. I'm positive they came up with it in their self as well. It's not that hard to get to that. But I was thinking about it. I discussed it with people. But who's got time to do that? But the Buffalo Bodega thing I think is really interesting because there's all these little corner stores throughout Buffalo. And if you walk in sometimes and you're, like, desperate for food, they end up having these, like, fire, sure. like, You'll get, like, falafel pizza and, like, the craziest mix of, like, cultures and ethnicities at a really affordable price point. So they're my, like, up-and-coming rising star pick for the next uh, couple of years. But, no, I've always decided pizza was the way to go. I think it's best just to pick a path and focus on it because you have an easier chance getting through to people and becoming more knowledgeable on something that way. Yeah, speaking of that, do you find copycatters? And not using that term in a, in a negative way, but people that idolize you and try to do the same thing that you're doing? There have been... A litany of pizza uh, accounts that have come up in the past couple of years. Um, but I, I don't have ill will on any of them. Sure. I think everybody should go out and give it their best and give it their all and try to do it. It's um, just you'll fail. I mean, it's <laughs> just, go ahead and eat 104 pizzas, <laughs> idiot. <laughs> you have five years on you, baby. Good luck. No, like 100%. Like, they should go out. They should do it. Have some fun. And uh, there's 600 pizzerias, and I've only been to like 100 and like just under 150 probably. So there's a huge market of pizzerias that I haven't been to. So like, go try, get some newness. Like, the more focus we can get on pizza in Buffalo as like a thing, the more we have a chance of making it a thing right. outside of Buffalo. Sure. And what a great thing that would be to have people come and like want to experience this pizza food culture that all of our expats when they come home want to try, want to eat. More news on Buffalo and Buffalo food scene is is great as far as I'm concerned. So there have been a lot that have come out. I haven't found anybody yet that has bitten off my style too much. So as long as you find a lane and don't try to swim in like my goofy weird emoji world of like <laughs> me, like just don't directly plagiarize everything. And I'm 100% fine. With your it. descriptions are what make your page like even even better. I try to put some flair into the creative writing aspect of it. I really enjoy that. I like writing a lot, so that's always been part of why I've kept it going as well. Back to like why I don't care about the financial part of it. I just writing is super fun for me. So. Sure. I've always enjoyed that as well. And, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I hope that's become a differentiator for sure. I try to keep it light and jokey because it's also, like, I'm talking about pizza. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm reviewing Cameron's 24-hour store, like, right across from Mr. Pizza at, like, 3 in the morning. <laughs> like, if you're trying to get analytical and serious on that, <laughs> yeah. you're losing your mind, man. <laughs> right. So that's what keeps it fun for me, too. Yeah. So we also have to talk about you're wearing a mask. You, you started wearing this. Is there a reason why you want to protect your identity, witness protection or something like that? <laughs> it's mostly the extensive backlog of criminal history that I have. Specifically through the IRS. Yeah, and all the states surrounding New York and Canada. Um, no, I, 
I started off doing it. Um, I didn't want to put my name behind it in the first place just because it's not supposed to be about you. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not about, oh, like, I'm going to get in trouble with this one. Um, but there's like, there's so many accounts out right now. And I love you guys. You have your place. You're obviously successful. It's going for you. But like, there's so many accounts that are just girls with pizza and girls with beer. And it's just tits and ass. And like, there happens to be a slice in the background. Yeah. And like, that to me is like, just do the tits and ass thing then. Like, I don't know. At the end of the day, it's just, it's such a weird culture of like this right. Instagram thing where it's like, oh, I happen to like, I'm really into bicycling, but I do it in like thong bikinis. Like, it's such this weird, it's this gray line of trying to separate like what is a food review thing and sure. what is just you like thought and bopping on Instagram. And I don't know, to me at that point, like, I don't care about your subject matter anymore when your photo has to have you in it for me to enjoy it. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's why I've just, I've kept myself out of it completely and I don't want to be personally involved in it. It's not about me. I, I don't want anybody to like care about me at all. It's, I, it's, I'm, it's pizza, man. Like, right. it's the, Please, I'm trying no to No one show up when I die. <laughs> like, I just, I, it's, it's not supposed to be like this big thing for me at all. Like sure. it's about pizza. I'm trying to highlight the pizza. It's my opinion on pizza, 100%. And that I've always defended as like, it's just what I think. It's not what is the, the gold standard. But that's why I've, I've mostly kept out of it just because I don't think it's appropriate to try to put your personality into food reviews too heavily because then you're taking the eyes off of the subject matter too much. And that's just, it's just, it's not what it's about for me. Right. It works for a lot of people, but I just don't think it's right. It's very noble, man. I give you props. Well, I don't know. I'm try some white knight of like, oh, these thoughts are ruining my life. Like, no, it's, it's, uh, it's just... It's just never been for me. I'm also not a 20 year old, 20 year old, 180 pound like, woman. So <laughs> true. <laughs> Buck 80 was a little. Right? Anyhow. <laughs> so you want to like get your Instagram plug yeah. again, just so people know where to find you? Yeah, sure. I'm Sexy Slices. Uh, that's Sexy Slices on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook for the oldies, and um, quick to come on SexySlices.com. <laughs> and no YouTube yet, but we're working on it. <laughs> well, if you need any help, let us know. Well, yeah. thank you so much, man. We really appreciate it. Like you just said, that's his Instagram page. Go give him a follow, and we appreciate your time. No, I thank you guys. This has been super fun for me. Yeah, I feel like I completely dominated. I feel like I didn't get any of your pizza knowledge on this. <laughs> is there anything you guys want to share? At least give me what your favorite pizza Dude, is. Dude, we, we focus on booze, bro. Like, we yeah. don't... But you guys eat pizza. Are you, are you a whiskey yeah. fan? I am a huge whiskey fan. All right, perfect. All right, then we'll... we'll... We'll figure something out. We'll, we'll collaborate. <laughs> all right. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. My favorite whiskey is Wild Turkey, so you guys can oh, hate me all turkey. you want for that. No, Wild Turkey's good. Yeah. That's, my, that's, yeah. my, that's my baseline sipping whiskey. Well, not sipping. I do sip it. But it's not like if I've got company over, I'm not busting out the Wild Turkey. <laughs> right. But I do for myself and not the 101. I don't know why the hell that's like the only bottle you can find. Right. I hate 101 Wild Turkey. I am really into um, the Four Roses single barrel is a very nice yeah. bourbon for me. I just had a bottle of that the other night. I really like that whiskey. Yeah, no shame. Good. It's super good. It's a really, really nice everyday drinker. Yeah. That's what we call it. Everyday yeah. drinker. Like, if you could just go home after work and you're stressed out, what's one the one go-to? So Yeah, it's not your Pappy Van Winkle that you're dusting off for, like, right. know, a debut, like, dignitary that came over to your house or something. <laughs> right. It's a really, it's a nice whiskey. It's nice enough. You get a hell of a price on it at the Duty Free. Um, yep. Yeah. But pizza's like whiskey, man. Even that, like, your worst bottle of whiskey, it's still going to be pretty good. Oh, my God. Look at the tie-in we've See? got going on now. That's a good place to end what it What right a round there. it out. Yeah. <laughs> Cut it. Wrap well, it. Well, well, thank you again. No, Appreciate my pleasure. It. This was great. See you guys later, and um, I wish you all the best of luck. Right. I'll be following along. Absolutely. Thanks, We're out. Bye, gang.